morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> morning. Jack, have you got everybody muted? Um, there's somebody in the chat box. Has... Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our weekly uh, webinar. Um, today we are joined uh, by a couple of our nurses who have already made uh, the move to the UK. Um, so they'll be discussing their journey to Devon uh, and their experience um, since uh, being here uh, with us. Um, also joined by uh, Carly Boyce uh, again, who will be working with you uh, and the teams uh, to make sure uh, you have all the support needed to make the journey to Devon as smoothly as possible. Um, just to let everyone know, we will be uh, doing uh, a QA and a uh, at the end uh, of the webinar, um, but please during the webinar, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate um, to put them into the Q&A box um, and obviously we will answer them at the end. Um, I firstly just wanted uh, to go through um, a small sort of presentation uh, with you. Um, it slightly touches on what we were, were talking about um, last week uh, about our hospitals. We've got a couple of uh, videos um, to show you, which will just uh, represent, um, you know, the, the hospitals themselves, um, but also what it's like to, to live uh, in the area um, also. Um, so the first one we, we've got for you um, is uh, the University Hospitals uh, Plymouth, um, which is obviously one of the, the largest hospitals uh, in the area. Um, this video is just going to show you uh, what happens um, in Plymouth uh, during the year. Hopefully everyone's got sound. I haven't got any sound, Jack. Oh, is it not working again? Oh, I do apologise, everybody. Bear with me. Let me just uh, stop sharing. Let me try again. I do apologise about this. Everyone did test it out the other day um, and it worked fine. Um, not sure why it's not working um, for this. Sorry, bear with me two seconds. So technology is great when it works, um, but a bit of a nightmare when it doesn't. So do bear with me two seconds. Hopefully, if I start it from the beginning again, can everyone hear it now? Yeah, perfect.
So yeah, as you can see, Plymouth has a, a lot going uh, on for it. Um, now we've come to uh, the Royal Devon uh, and Exeter. Um, if I remember correctly, this video uh, will show you more uh, about the hospital um, itself. There we go, we're all finished there, so just stay where you are. Release the finger itself. What we're trying to do is protect the arteries. The healthcare is a demanding environment to work in. Every day throws up a new challenge. The red phone can give us 20 minutes warning for a major incident, a cardiac arrest. We have no idea what's going to happen. You just come on shift and you wait and see. It's really important to be a team player. We work with everyone you could possibly imagine here, ODPs, mental health, paediatrics, community services, occupational therapists. There's a, there's a strong team spirit and I think it's essential for anywhere in any healthcare service that, that that is maintained. It's hugely important that we all work well together. Hi ladies. One of the things I really get a buzz from in this job is dealing with really difficult situations and being able to turn around and hopefully get a good outcome. How's Mr Adicott today? Yeah, when you see people responding and you can manage their illness so that you improve the quality of their life, that is a truly, truly rewarding thing to do. When the, we get feedback that we've made a real difference to the care of that patient or we've we've helped elucidate a diagnosis that we're struggling with, that's really rewarding. Knowing that you've impacted on someone's life in a positive way, just knowing that you've done your best for them is very rewarding. Okay, we're just going to get you on to the side. One of the big parts of my life is training. If there is room to grow if you want to grow. There's opportunities every day to, to broaden your horizons. We have a good training programme for anyone that starts in the department that everyone's involved with. Lots of study days, lots of learning of new skills and support. I think that really tells of a good department because they're willing to invest time into developing the next generation. Innovation is a key part of working in the emergency department. Um, so we encourage people when they come to work here, if they feel that they can make a difference, we're interested in those ideas. We're sort of up there in, with, in terms of new technologies and, and state-of-the-art surgery. We do it for the love, don't we? <laughs> I absolutely love this job. I think it's easily the best job I've ever had. I really, really enjoy being a matron. It's a lovely place to work. It, there's a really strong sense of family here. Um, everyone looks after you personally and professionally. People are accessible. You know who people are as you walk down the corridor. People are friendly. Everyone says hello and smiles. If the staff are enjoying their work and finding it a friendly environment, hopefully that rubs off on the care that we deliver to the patients here. You form relationships and you form relationships with people you work with closely. And the fact that they're all flexible, they're all willing to go the extra mile, and they're all very supportive means that we can have what we want, which is patient care at our focus. How are you today? Okay. You're feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I'll see you again. Thanks. Bye. So as you can see, everyone, um, yeah, a great uh, hospital uh, offering a lot of services to their, their patients, um, really good team um, as well. Um, so again, um, this is going to be a, a video from Torbay uh, in South Devon, um, which again talks about um, the hospital um, itself. Uh, my name is Adam. I am a staff nurse at Torbay Hospital. Uh, I've been here for almost two years now. I work in the A&E department. We're the front line of the hospital really. So we take all of the ambulances, all of the people who are really poorly or really injured. The part of the job I like the most is that every day is never going to be the same. You're exposed to a lot. We get anything from jokes, 
to major traumas, you name it, it comes straight to us. So we're always looking for the patient's best interests, um, get them fixed and get them home. We do that using a multidisciplinary team, such as uh, physios, OTs, as well as the doctors and nurses that help out. So being a relatively small hospital, we cover quite a big area. Um, it's, it's busy, but that also means your shift goes very, very quickly. It can be very challenging, but at the same time, it's very rewarding and you learn a lot. The team I work with are really supportive. We're all there for each other. We're all there for support. It's such a good team. I don't know what I'd do without them now. So they've offered me lots of training since I've been here. Torbay Hospital has a fantastic uh, training facility uh, with uh, simulation suites. So the simulation suite almost feels like a real environment. It's somewhere you can practice learning the skills that you learn on paper and put them into practice. Um, I've managed to progress to be one of the most senior nurses uh, in the AE department. Living and working in Torbay is great. I do work a lot of time, but I love it here. It's a really, really nice trust, friendly staff, supportive, but when I'm off, I like to get on the beach, go surfing. Throughout the summer, I'm constantly playing volleyball down the green. I couldn't imagine living anywhere else now that I live here. So as you can see from Tall Bay, um, obviously uh, a lot of opportunity uh, to grow uh, as a nurse um, and grow uh, through the, the, the trust uh, itself. Um, now we've got uh, a video from North Devon uh, Healthcare. down and worked in Devon straight away because it's where I always wanted to be. Devon is a fantastic place to live, it's got everything. It's a, it's a playground for adults and it's also a really friendly place to live. If you're into the outdoors, into surfing, cycling, walking, you know, it's all here and whatever you want, it's on your doorstep. So if you finish work at five o'clock in the summer, you can spend a few hours at the beach without much trouble at all. So, you know, the work-life balance is really excellent. It's a fantastic place to work. It's a, it's a small hospital. It's a very friendly hospital to work at, so everyone knows each other and it's very easy to get things done with that sort of personal contact. I think the team dynamics is excellent. There's always supervision, there's always positivity and you never feel alone. I think that for me is one of the best things that you've just got such a great support network. The hospital offers all the challenges that you'd look for within a surgical career, but at the same time, there's the most dynamic and outstanding surrounding countryside. The real attraction of North Devon is the climate that we're in and the, the landscape. It's also a great place to raise kids and to raise a young family. I live a bit further south on the edge of Dartmoor. From where I live, I can be up the top of Sorton Tour with my kids within half an hour of leaving my house, and that's really quite special. We're a very research active trust, so we have annually a recruitment of about 700 patients into clinical trials across 70 different studies. And that's across many, many fields of medicine, surgery, and as well as doctors uh, heading up research, we have allied health professionals doing so as well. So we have physiotherapists, we have nurses who are heading up studies. So yeah, we have a very diverse portfolio. We're one of the top bowel cancer screening programs in the country. Even though we may be a small hospital, there is room here for growth and to ensure we're at the cutting edge of NHS care. There's fantastic opportunities for trainees coming through the hospitals, as well as consultants looking to work here. There's opportunities to learn some complex operating at the same time in a fantastic location. The staff are really friendly and you really feel valued. 
the hospital is small enough to have a really tight knit, close community team. However, it's big enough to allow you to progress wherever you want to do, take your learning wherever it wants to go and just have the best career that you possibly could have. I think it's fantastic being able to live in an area of the country where for children there's a very outdoors atmosphere, houses are affordable, schools are fantastic. I decided to move down here, away from the hustle and bustle of the city, and it's just so much more relaxing. Everybody is so friendly. We have the surf, which is on our doorstep. You've got the beach and you've got all of the Exmoor as well. So it's perfect, good balance between work and lifestyle and generally a pretty good summer weather here. So I'm pretty happy about that. Within moments of leaving the hospital, you can be either in the water, on the beach or up on the moors. It's the hills and the sea that I love about uh, the West Country. Definitely, this is one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. I came and worked at North Devon District Hospital and I don't want to leave. <laughs>
we had a very successful first webinar last week and we're going to be we're planning on running these every Thursday between 10 and 11 for people that are waiting to join um, our beautiful part of the country. So um, my name's Carly Boyce and I'm the Devon International Recruitment Hub pastoral lead. So it's my job to make sure that you feel you feel well supported before you arrive um, and as we introduce you to your organisation. So as these weeks move forward, we're going to we're planning on having lots of different webinars on lots of different topics such as OSCE training um, and we thought we'd do our week two today um, and this is following some of the feedback that we had last week and that you'd really like to hear stories from our international nurses that have already they've already made the journey over they they're well established within our organizations um, and they can tell you how it's been uh, for them so there will be an opportunity at the end to ask to ask some questions and I'm going to be keeping an eye on the chat so please post your questions but we'll do them all together at the end so I'm really proud to say we've actually got three uh, representatives from our organizations in Devon um, we have Alex Redome from Torbay. We've got Addy Franklin from Northern Devon Healthcare Trust and we've got Carmela from Torbay and South Devon. So I'm just going to hand over to Alex who's got a presentation um, and like I say please put your questions in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Thanks Alex. Thanks Carly. Um, good morning everybody. My name is Alex. So I was asked to talk about my experience today working in the UK, specifically working in Torbay. Um, just a fair warning, I'll be talking about myself today, um, which some might perceive as arrogance, but I promise you that I rarely talk about myself in person. Um, but yes, if we could go to the next slide, please. I would like to begin um, with this Japanese proverb saying, fall seven times, stand up eight. Um, I personally believe in hard work, determination and persistence in accomplishing any goals. Next slide, please. Um, I have been in the UK for more than four years now, and soon I will be applying for my permanent residency. So I am currently a band seven epilepsy specialist nurse. Um, in summary, I would travel to um, different community hospitals. I would do um, nurse led outpatient clinics. I would do care planning, management planning, and I would teach and um, conduct epilepsy awareness courses to health workers, carers, patients and families. So it is almost an independent role, but we do have support from our consultant neurologist. But how did I get there? Next slide, please. Like many of you, I studied nursing in the Philippines for about four years. I was a general nurse in the Philippines, so that meant that I was um, having experience in PEDS and in neonatal intensive care in maternity and um, more in adult medical surgical nursing. Um, I took IELTS and CBT. Um, when I passed, I submitted my papers to the agency. I had my medical exam and after six months, I flew to the UK to work. Um, I started working as a Bantry nursing associate in one of the main hospitals in London. So, um, so back in London, um, we had to review for three months before taking the OSCE. Three months because um, it is to adapt to the culture, to the language, to the people in the UK. When I passed the OSCE, I was given the NMC pin. So basically it's, it's a license for you to practice nursing in the Philippines, uh, in the UK, I mean, sorry. Next slide, please. Um, I then work as um, when I had my pen. Um, I work as a neuroscience nurse in London for about two years. I then moved to Torbay in 2019. Back then, my wife was working in Torbay while I was in London, so we were living um, quite far apart. 
and we both decided that the quality of life was better outside the city. And this was a decision made after numerous travels to and from London and after considering the pros and the cons. So moving to Torbay in 2019, I worked as a band five research nurse in clinical drug trials and observational research studies. So in basically I was implementing um, research trials, so it, it's new medications for different health conditions. And I was, um, well, I was doing observational research studies, mostly questionnaire studies. After seven months, um, I was promoted to a band six research nurse position, which meant that I was leading on research studies and I was also a principal investigator for some of our studies here in Torbay. Um, after about a year, when the epilepsy specialist nurse position came up and given my experience in neurosciences, I applied and I was accepted in my current role. As I was saying earlier, nothing beats hard work, determination, plus a bit of humility and work ethic. Um, some people do say that it was too quick for me to progress um, to be promoted. But one thing to remember is when you have the capability, the passion and dedication to do a job, nothing is impossible. Our trust, Port Bay and South Devon is very, very generous in granting promotions to those deserving. And I believe that um, nearly all of the first Filipino nurses who arrived in Torquay in 2017 are now band six um, charged nurses in their own departments. So as you can see the pictures below, this is our hospital. It's um, quite big, so it's a 300 bed capacity hospital. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, I'm sure many of you um, will ask um, why did I move from the city to the countryside to Torbay? The first one, the first reason, the first main reason would be the house prices. Well, when I was in London, I was renting a two bed flat, so we were three in the flat. So basically the living room was converted to a um, another bedroom and we had a very tiny kitchen and a very small dining area. So I was paying 500 pounds um, back in London and with that um, you can get a one bedroom flat or a studio studio flat here in Turkey um, all to yourself. So the salary, the number two reason is the salary. So it's, it's um, I would say, um, a bit higher in London due to additional allowance because of the higher cost of living. But I would say that there is not much of a difference. Um, groceries seem to be more expensive um, and the house prices, again, house rents are, are quite expensive in London. Um, the number three reason for moving here in Torbay is the better support system. When I moved to Torre Bay, I was well supported by Claire um, and now Hannah. Um, she's um, the international nurse coordinator. And there was constant communication and prompt responses to any query. So um, in comparison, when I arrived in London, well, I was fetched in the airport and I was um, brought to my um, accommodation. But that's it, really. I was given a train ticket I was instructed on how to get to the train station and how to get to work. And um, but I didn't know how to get to the other side of the train station. Where do I stop? Um, imagine if, if, if you are uh, moving to a different city, it's, it's quite stressful. In Port Bay, we do have that support system. And as you can see in the picture, this is our growing overseas Filipino um, nurse community. So it's growing each year. Really. So again, in Port Bay, someone is there to welcome you. Taxi will fetch you from the airport and there are bonus food baskets in, in the accommodation. Um, the last one would be the quality of life, as mentioned earlier in, in the videos. If you prefer the peace and solitude, we are walking distance and we are very close to the mountains here in Port Bay and um, you don't spend any activities doing those. Um, I mean, you don't spend any money doing those activities. 
In London, our day offs would include dining, shopping, and sp spending money because those are the activities you do in the city. Um, but yes, if, if you prefer shopping, we do have a town center in, here in Turkey, and we are very close to Exeter and Plymouth. And you can always visit London if you want to. Yes, so that's it for me. Um, I, I do hope that I have inspired you all with my journey and my experience, and I hope that you take pleasure in learning and value your experiences, um, good and even the bad, because these will make who you are in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. That was really inspirational. Um, love the photos, what journey you've had. Um, I think you'll be inspiring our attendees this morning with that. Um, so I'd like to go straight straight on to Essie from North Devon. Don't think they've joined us today, Carly, unfortunately. Oh, OK, that's fine. Let's go straight on to Carmela then from Torbay. Hello, good morning, everyone. So I hope everyone is safe. Um, so Alex and I came here about the same time. So um, before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Camille, and I'm one of the international nurses employed by Torbay last 2017. Um, so I'm currently working as a Bansic sister in a cardiology ward in Torbay Hospital. So my main role is to support my manager, um, support my, my junior staff, and um, manage the ward, um, attend MDC meetings together with the doctors, physiotherapists, and um, uh, other medical staff. So today, I think the Devon Hub um, gave us a big role to um, to convince all of you to come and work here in Southwest. And um, Alex and I both work in Tall Bay, so we'll, we talk more about our journey in Torbay Hospital. And um, as you all know, uh, as nurses, uh, we need to take IELTS, pass CBT, and complete the medical tests required for us to come over here. And after doing all of that, uh, which took about less than a year, starting from the beginning, from application process, and then interviews and up to deployment. So it was really a smooth application. Um, but the most crucial part was just taking and passing IELTS or OET, which we all know is a bit difficult at the moment because of COVID situation. So um, like what, what Alex said, I'll talk about myself as well. And um, just to share a little bit of my experience. Um, when I first came here in 2017, thought of living and working abroad did not sink in until I landed together with my friends in Heathrow Airport. So it's my first time to work abroad and live far from the comfort of home. It was mixed emotions. So a part of me is scared of the unknown and also excited of what's in store for me in the future. But I just kept on telling myself that this is it. This is my UK dream and it's finally coming true. So it was um, an answered prayer, really. Um, so I am here today to share my experiences and hopefully persuade and encourage all of you um, attending this webinar to come over and be part of our growing community here in the Southwest. So it's not only Tobe, but also Plymouth, North Devon and Exeter. So basically, I live in Turkey now, which um, they call uh, English Riviera, and it's known for the seaside views and beautiful scenery, as you've seen in the pictures and videos that were shown earlier. So I must admit, I'm a city girl, and when Tracy and her staff came to the Philippines, they told us that um, it's not a city, Tobe is not a city. Um, so it's more on beaches, coastal country living, but I love where I live now. It's calm and peaceful. So it's away from a busy and buzzing society. So it's a bit of a personal choice, really. 
And work-wise, I like and I love working in Torbay Hospital. The first day with, uh, I set foot on Torbay, I felt really welcome. And the people are very friendly. Even if they don't know you, they always say hi to you. They always greet you in the lobby, um, across the cor uh, along the corridors, they always smile. So it's a really good environment and place to work. So the main goal of the trust is to work together for the people. And it's like working with family. Um, I know all of you are asking about and wanting to know about the salary. So when I first started here, I, um, uh, I was a band three. Um, well, I'm trained there, as they call it that. And it was so difficult because um, I'm part of the first cohort, and we were called guinea pigs at that time because they don't know how to, um, what training to give us, um, how to support us. But um, uh, they, we really felt supported by the trust and um, headed by Tracy and her um, staff. So they are very approachable. So if you need anything, we just tell them and um, they act on it, especially during our OSCE training. They also helped us um, with the language and culture because moving to a different country, um, it's really difficult, especially with how they speak, um, what are um, the norms here in the UK. Um, but we really felt supported. Um, aside from that, I'm going back to the salary. Um, so I said I was band three, but I think now with the new Devon um, Hub recruitment package, um, we start at the top of the band four. So it's a bit different in this um, package now. So they're very, very generous. And I think um, all of you um, have a copy of what they're offering. So that is really good. And when we came over, um, first thing when we entered the flat, we saw a pack of groceries. So you won't starve at all. <laughs> um, food is accessible and there's always rice. I know Asian people love rice, so there's always rice. And um, yeah, uh, it will be very difficult at first, but the people here will make you feel welcome. And um, with your nursing career, there will always be progression and opportunities for career, career development in the future. So trainings and supports are easily accessible. With hard work and determination, you will be able to climb up the ladder and choose your own nursing pathway. So it's very um, uh, accessible. And all you have to do is just believe in yourself that you can do it, strive and work harder, and um, you will achieve what you want um, nursing career-wise. So I can definitely say that this job of ours that we do is mentally, physically, and psychologically exhausting. But the good thing is that NHS Trust ensures the well-being of their employees so it's very important here that you need to maintain your work and social and work-life balance. This is what I love about working here in the UK because you get to enjoy life, you get to work as well, and um, they look after their own. They encourage everyone to have a breather. So I'm just very fortunate that some of my friends back home are also living and working here in the UK and we get to enjoy these beautiful places here in Devon. And in addition, I'm very thankful to Torbay Hospital for supporting me throughout this whole process right from the start of the application and when I renewed my visa after three years. And they shouldered all the expenses and renewed my contract again for another three years. Um, Living and working here in the UK opened lots of doors for me. So I was able to support my family. I got to travel and see beautiful and different places, different countries um, across Europe, 
and I also got the opportunity to settle down. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to buy a house already after four years and um, continue to reach in reaching my goals and dreams in life. Obviously, with um, all of this became possible because I worked in 12 days. So I encourage you, my fellow lovely nurses out there listening to apply here in one of our hospitals in the Southwest. I'm not being biased. <laughs> you can choose Torbay <laughs> and um, come to Devon and enjoy the beauty and um, a peaceful living. We are here and happy to help support, motivate and guide you as um, for you to become the best um, in your chosen career, because for us, this is home away from home. So hopefully um, I inspired you with my experience and I hope to see you all soon here in Devon. That, that was wonderful, Carmela. Thank you so much. It's really good to hear about your journey and your perspective on you know, the process of when you arrived to the UK. So that was great. So we're hearing some really great talks this morning. So we're just going to uh, just have a few technical issues at the moment, um, inviting Essie, one of our nurses from North Devon. So if you can just, just give us a few moments and please keep the questions coming in the live Q&A and I'm making a little list um, and we will get to them at the end. OK, so we're just having a few technical issues inviting the, the third speaker. So I think it's probably best if we carry on with the question and answers. So, Jack, there's a few questions in the chat there about causes. And I noticed there was a particular question about whether they could swap organisations. So I don't know if you could um, pick that one up, please. Uh, thanks, Carly. So, yeah, the one about the swapping uh, of hospitals, I messaged back uh, privately. Um, so, yes, uh, if you change your, your mind and you decide you, you want to change location, uh, if you could just send us uh, an email um, just to let us know your, your name and which organisation you would like to join, uh, we'll then take that uh, into um, account. Um, with the cause uh, question um, we are in in talks with all the trusts um, currently to organize uh, deployments um, from uh, August uh, onwards um, so we will be starting to uh, organize the causes over the, the next coming days um, and potentially you know sooner than that one of us will be in touch to confirm um, also, when I'm on the call, I did notice another one um, asking about India um, and when they can expect the earliest deployment. Um, as I'm sure everyone's aware, uh, unfortunately, if you're from India, um, we're not uh, currently uh, allowed to deploy you um, to the UK. Uh, there is no flight um, from India um, to the UK. Um, we are obviously reviewing that uh, on a daily basis. Um, so once um, the restrictions have been lifted, um, we will look to deploy you as soon as possible, um, but we will email everyone uh, who's based in India um, over the hopefully over the next coming days. We're just putting something to, together um, on that one. Um, probably a good one for you, Carly. Here, I don't know if you've seen it. It was asking about uh, the OSCE training, um, asking to find out more about it, and also how many months coaching they will get as well. Yeah, no problem. So um, all of our organisations within Devon, whichever one that you or you are deployed to, offer a significant OSCE education package for you. So they're not all the same. They're obviously, the, the same teaching is delivered. Some of them 
and it's been based on feedback that they've had from our overseas nurses so some of them run over a couple of weeks full time some of them run it for longer but on a part-time basis so that you are working a, a bit clinically and then going to OSCE training and to be honest there's positives and negatives to both ways and I think it's about which works best for the organisation as well so you'll get a significant OSCE education package whichever trust you are deployed to um, and then the organisation will arrange booking your OSCE exam and accommodation and travel if needed to um, to attend the OSCE exam centre um, and then obviously if if you are you're one of the few that fail a, a station or two then that OSCE education you know the, the clinical education team within the trust will put in more training for you as well um, see so what you're very well supported in terms of OSCE education um, we I think our average amount of hours is higher than the national average of OSCE education sessions um, so I hope that reassures you um, and also all of our partners within Devon they all offer the preceptorship program so once you've got your pin number and you're working within your clinical teams you will be put onto the preceptorship program which which is again another support course um, to help you settle into your new teams and you'll have that opportunity to work with other new staff in the organisation. It's multidisciplinary, so it spans across physiotherapists, occupational therapists, nurses. So it's it's a really sort of good opportunity to network with other professionals within the organisation. OK, I'm just reading through the questions. Is there anything? I oops. Is there anything I haven't answered? You've answered the cause questions. So Jack, are you able to pick up about, there's a couple of questions in there about um, nurses have asked if husband and baby can come in the same flight. So I've got, I've got some experience of this and that um, normally the nurses come over and then the families join later. Um, would, would you agree with that, Jack? Yeah, I, I, that's what we normally see uh, from our nurses. Obviously, when you first um, join uh, your trust, obviously the main focus is the OSCE uh, exam. Um, so you, you obviously got a lot of training to do um, to, to pass that, as well as you know fitting into the culture and the environment. Um, so most of our nurses from internationally uh, will wait until uh, they've passed their OSCE and um, they are a registered nurse um, to make sure that they are settled. Also the good thing as well, it gives you time to look at the, the, the area that you're living and find out where you would prefer to live. Um, also if they're at school age as well, which schools to join. Um, so that is my experience as well. Um, I don't know if, if Tracy, with your experience, is that sort of what you've seen as well? Um, yes, yeah. Mo good morning, everybody. Um, it's wonderful to see you all on the on the call this morning. But yes, uh, you're, you're absolutely correct. We we strongly recommend because there is so much happening when you first come to the UK, um, settling into the NHS, you know, a new environment, you will be um, studying really hard for your OSCE. We would strongly recommend that you wait um, for at least six months um, before you bring uh, your bring your family to the UK. Um, so uh, th there's just so much going on um, at that, um, you know, when you first um, first arrive. So um, it, it's for your, for your own interest, really, in terms of your learning and settling into the environment. Jack oh, Carley, can I just um, just pick up? I have just um, and, I, <clears throat> and forgive me because I know you're you're leading this today. I've just seen um, a, a message in, in the Q&A from Bindu just regarding CBT from home. Um, so I'm presuming 
The question is here, obviously, the CBT centres have been, um, they're closed because of the, uh, the situation in India. Um, yes, it is acceptable for you to sit your test at home. It would be really helpful if you could email Jack or make contact with Jack or Victoria um, you, you know, regarding your, your details so I can pass this on to the NMC here in the UK. Uh, there is an online CBT test and we can support uh, nurses in India that are unable to actually sit their, sit their exam um, you know, uh, in person. So if you can let us know your details, we can we can arrange that. Thanks, Brilliant. Tracy. Um, I just noticed there's a question there about shift timings. Um, so it so in the main, the shifts are um, 11 and a half hours long and and obviously that covers sort of long days and long nights. Obviously, there will be uh, variances within that depending on which organisation and which clinical setting you work on but the majority you will be expected to work 13 long shifts per four weeks which is 150 hours and that's full time um, and that's always been a very successful model with our overseas nurses in terms of flexibility for leave um, and flexibility to pick up bank shifts and overtime as well so that that's always been quite a positive thing for our organisations. Can I just quickly step in, Carly, as well? I've seen a, a question um, about uh, flights. Um, so, yeah, I can, can confirm that the trust will book your flight um, for you. Um, so they'll try to get you here uh, without any stops as quick, you know, and as quickly um, as possible. Obviously, sometimes that that isn't doable um, and you might need to stop um, somewhere, um, but we'll try and get you the, the best flight uh, possible uh, on that one. Um, the other thing I noticed uh, is well is someone's asked about when will they resign uh, due to, to the notice. So what I would, would suggest is, is just hold off resigning uh, for the moment. Either myself um, or Victoria, who's the other international recruitment partner, uh, will be in touch uh, with uh, another offer letter, which actually comes directly from the trust that you will be joining. Um, when you've got that that, that is when I would say to hand uh, your notice or resign from your position um, and obviously we'll work with you to make sure that your deployment date fits in uh, with those resign resignations. Um, so yeah, we'll support you with that. Um, just going through now to see if there's anything else. Um, there's a question here, I'm not sure who wants to, to answer it, um, but it's about the quarantine uh, policies um, and the costs uh, as well as the duration um, of free accommodation. So I don't know who wants to talk about the, the quarantine situation currently. Yes, yeah, so obviously, um, you know, quarantine accommodation costs that are picked up by the organisations. Um, so whether you have to quarantine in a hotel, you know, near the airport when you arrive in the UK or whether you quarantine when you get to the organisation. Um, but those costs are picked up by the organisation. And obviously we have to take the lead from the government as to how long your quarantine period will need to be. It used to be 14 days. It's now 10 days. But obviously that you know, we're, we're very receptive to the World Health Organization and their recommendations in terms of red countries, quarantine periods. Um, so obviously that is subject to change. Probably another one here for you, Carly, as well. Um, is the accommodation shared with four people or more? So, um, the accommodation, you will all have your own bedroom, so your your sleeping area is absolutely private. Um, a lot of the accommodation is that you, it's almost like a bit of a flat, so you share a kitchen and, and a living area. Um, obviously, if you're quarantined, then it might be dependent on who, if you're coming as a group, you might, we might put you in a little bubble in the accommodation. Um, so that you bubble together while you're having your quarantine period, but you all have your, you will 
absolutely have your separate bedroom. Um, you might be sharing a kitchen and living accommodation with others. Thank you, Carly. I don't know if there's any other questions uh, at all that people want to ask. We have seem to have uh, gone through the ones we've got already. Can I just just mention just a quick a quick one, Jack, just before um, we go off the call? I can see there's there's a lot of um, questions from nurses in India um, with uh, questioning around the uh, issuing of certificates of sponsorship. Um, we we're still we, we cannot issue a cause at this moment in time whilst the um, the restrictions are still um, are still in place from India. We know the government um, is reviewing on a regular basis and they are obviously in conversations with the Indian um, government as well. So uh, I know there is a review due in around two weeks time. Um, we will, of course, let you know um, as soon as we hear anything, but please rest assured your offer of employment still stands. And as soon as we're able to, uh, the restrictions are lifted, we will be able to look at issuing certificates of sponsorship or going through the next the next stage process. So um, please do not worry. I know it's a really difficult time over in India at the moment and we're, we're, we're thinking of you and all sending our, our prayers and good wishes to everybody, but please you know, just just bear with and, um, you know, our, our our government are constantly reviewing um, the list of countries that are on the red list. Um, obviously, we know as soon as the restrictions and it's safe to do so from India um, are lifted, you know, we'll be able to progress to the next steps. But please feel rest assured your offer of employment, um, as I mentioned last week, still stands. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. There's another one here that might be a, a good one for, for yourself um, regarding if they choose not to use our accommodation, um, what offering is there? Um, so, for example, money and when would that be given to them? Did you want me to pick this up, Jack or Carly, or did you? Yep, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm aware yeah. you're leading, Carly, so I don't want to. No, it's tread fine, on your so toes. I'm, I'm aware. I'm aware of what we would do in one of our organisations, obviously where I've come from, but I don't know if that if that's um, replicated across. So uh, yes, so we will offer um, obviously free accommodation uh, for two months or six hundred pounds uh, British pounds towards uh, costs if you wish to find. Uh, alternative accommodation. So you will be given some money if that's your choice um, to, to uh, find your own your own accommodation um, and you will be given that uh, upon obviously arrival uh, in the UK. Thank you Tracy. Um, there's a question here um, which I can probably answer when we're going to create a WhatsApp group. So once we've got uh, deployment um, date also we know which trust um, you're going to be joining um, what we will do is either set up uh, a whatsapp uh, group um, with everybody that are deploying on the same date um, or uh, looking at uh, facebook groups um, as well um, so we will do the introductions um, before you arrive um, so you can uh, all have a chat together Um, so we'll, the, oh, sorry, sorry. So I was just going to say, so as, as we move forward with these weekly webinar chats, you know, please log in. Um, please tell your friends about our Devon International Recruitment Team. Give them our email, get them to send us, you know, if you've got friends that, you know, uh, sort of CBT OSCE ready that want to come to the UK. Um, I'm just writing a programme at the minute. Of, we're going to be doing some OSCE training online before you even hit the UK. Um, so we'll be doing that through these webinar talks um, and we'll be doing that with the clinical teachers that you're going to be working with, with ed whichever organisation that will be. Um, so please put this in your diary to keep moving forwards. Um, tell your friends and obviously we're really trying to get you OSCE aware before you actually hit the UK. So that should fasten up the OSCE process for you as well. Um, so, yeah, really excited to do that. Uh, 
Excellent. That seems to be sort of all the, the questions there, Carly. Um, I don't know if you want to, to wrap it up. Yeah. So thanks everyone so much for joining us today and thank you to our wonderful and inspirational speakers from Torbay, the lovely Carmela and Alex, thank you. Um, I'm sure they, we've had some really good feedback in the chat there that it was inspirational and very comprehensive. So really appreciate you sharing your experience with us today and I hope you'll join us again. Um, obviously apologies, we, we did have, um, Essie, who's one of our nurses from South Africa, who was going to come on and talk about his experience to North Devon, but maybe we can arrange that another time. It's good old technology. <laughs> um, so thanks everyone for joining us. We will see you again, our attendees, next Thursday between 10 and 11. And we'll be sending you out uh, the topics and that we're going to cover probably early next week. Uh, everybody stay safe and please spread the good word. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.